Dead Eye was probably the most overpowered gear set in patch 1.6 because of its ability to grant a player with a 100% crit chance, meaning that if you stack enough critical hit damage, every shot is going to hit that much harder. With 1.7, Massive has made some changes to Dead Eye. For example, that the 100% crit chance bonus will now only be given to the player once he is both scoped in and in cover at the same time. But Massive also introduced the classified version of Dead Eye with a 5 piece that adds an additional 20% crit damage on top of what we already had. And as a result, well, Dead Eye is probably still going to be the most overpowered gear set in patch 1.7, able to do pretty much exactly what it did before, and in some cases, do it a little bit better. So, how do we build it? How do we get the most out of this gear set? Good question. Let's begin. Dead Eye is all about the damage, and when I'm playing with this gear set, I'm going to play with the mentality that no matter what opponent I'm up against, as long as I stay at mid to long range, I'm always going to win a fight. I'm playing with the mentality that if I die because someone else was able to shoot at me or get close to me, then that is my mistake. If I'm the dead eye, the opponent should have died before he could shoot back. That's basically the way you want to play. It is for this reason that with this dead eye build, I pretty much decided to drop my best in slot guide, forgo any and all survivability and focus 100% on my damage output. That means that I will have no electronics, no skill power, almost no health rolls on my gear, no exotic damage resilience, and it even means that I'm running with a reckless chest piece instead of the full dead eye six piece. The six piece dead eye gives the player 20% critical hit damage per second, all the way up to a maximum of 100% after killing a target with a headshot. And I should mention that this bonus procs both when you down an agent and when you completely kill them from the down state. It sounds very, very powerful, but I still believe that this is too situational because after you exit cover or scope out again, the buff disappears. Not only that, but it also kind of requires you to aim for the head, which can be a very difficult thing in the division because, you know, people move around a lot and good players will try to strafe against you and it's just not something that I feel is worth the buff considering how easy it is to lose the buff again afterwards. So as stupid as it may sound, I'd rather take the 8% extra damage that Reckless gives me and always have that on no matter what I do instead of something between 20 and 100% extra damage that is a lot more situational. Now the stat rolls that I have on my Reckless chest, they are obviously firearms, but then I also have health, skill haste and ammo capacity. For me, it was really a struggle to figure out what I wanted to go for on the chest. I could either pick the health or I could, instead of the health, go with enemy armor damage. Both of those are possibilities and there's an argument to be made for each one of them. For example, you can tell me to get health here because enemy armor damage doesn't do a whole lot in PvP anyway. But you can also tell me that that little bit of extra damage can indeed be the difference between getting a one shot and not getting a one shot and the health roll will get devalued anyway because of the reckless chest piece which reduces the effectiveness of health. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this up to you. If you want to go with enemy armor damage here instead of health, you can be my guest. I myself, I'm going to go with health here because after playing with it for a while and trying out both of them, I feel that a little bit of extra toughness that I get would more often save my life than the enemy armor damage would make a significant difference in terms of damage. The mask has firearms, enemy armor damage and burn resistance, I don't think that should come as a surprise to anybody. And the knee pads of course also have firearms, but then they also have critical hit damage, bleed resistance, shock resistance and burn resistance. Now if this was any other build at all, I probably would not be picking up the critical hit damage here. 9% is simply way too low with the regular cases, but because we're playing with 100% crit chance, this 9% critical hit damage directly translates to 9% more damage. So yeah, in this case, it is kind of worth it. I still wouldn't call it something super good, but it's definitely better than enemy armor damage here. Ideally, I would also like to have disrupt resistance instead of bleed resistance, especially considering that the EMP sticky is going to be the flavor of next month with classified reclaimer and classified striker being introduced. But until I get that, I'm going to have to farm a bit more. The backpack is pretty much the same. It has firearms, critical hit damage and ammo capacity. And then the gloves have, of course, also firearms, marksman rifle damage, critical hit damage and enemy armor damage. This is pretty much the god roll, so to speak. This is what you want to get on your gloves if you want to play Deadeye. The marksman rifle damage is absolutely crucial as it adds this number to the base of your weapon. And the critical hit damage roll on the gloves is just too good to leave out if you're playing Deadeye. 16 or 17% straight up damage. Enemy armor damage is the 
the only thing that you could really argue with if you would want to have that or not. You might want to switch this out for skill haste. Because the thing about skill haste is, is that it allows you to get your booster shot back a lot quicker. And even though your skill power is very low and the heal doesn't really do a whole lot for you, it still gives the player 15% extra damage upon activation, you know, regardless of skill power. So you would say the more often you can use this booster shot, the better. And that's a good point. However, I already gave up on enemy armor damage on the chest piece, so I decided to keep it on the gloves here. That's really the only reason. I didn't want to give up on too much damage, even though the numbers are very minimal. Of course, on the holster you get all three main stats, and then I have the major rolled into skill haste. The same with the mods, everything at the firearms, and then all of them also have that 3% skill haste on them. Again, I want to use the skill haste so I can get my booster back faster. As for my weapons, I've got the M700 Carbon, the SVD, and the Golden Rhino. The M700 is the weapon that I use for the juicy one-shots whenever I see the opportunity. The talents on it are pretty straightforward. I have prepared, deadly, and then I also have competent in the last slot because it synergizes pretty well with all the skill haste rolls that I have, you know, being able to proc those skills pretty frequently. And also pretty straightforward, I got all crit damage mods on them everywhere. The scope 20% crit damage, the muzzle 19%, the grip 20%, and then for the magazine, it's an extended magazine with rate of fire and 4% critical hit damage as well. The SVD that I have though is the weapon that you you're going to be using most of the time with this build. It has the exact same weapon mods as the M700, you know, just crit damage everywhere and then just an extended magazine with rate of fire and critical hit damage, and it should also have the same talents. However, Fortunately, I have not found a good one yet that allowed me to reroll the free talent. So instead of competent, I'm actually stuck with disciplined, which is probably one of the worst talents if you're using Deadeye. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of losing out on that 10% extra damage. And at this point though, you're probably wondering why on earth I got the Golden Rhino. And well, the answer is pretty simple. People wanted me to make a build with the Golden Rhino, so there you have it. The skills that I'm using are, as I mentioned before, the booster shot. And also, big surprise, the countermeasures mobile cover. Yeah, the mobile cover. This is actually not a joke. I'm using the mobile cover with this build. The reason for this is, is that because with Deadeye, I'm stuck to cover anyway since this patch, and using countermeasures not only gives me another 10% extra weapon damage, but it also gives me a total of 36% all damage resilience. That is 20% that I get as a base, and then another 16% from the mobile cover damage resilience performance mods. This uh, this kind of helps to make up for the reckless chest piece, so that when I'm using this cover, I'm not as squishy as that I usually am. I do not really use the pulse, because I feel that my skill power is simply too low to really get a lot of value from that. Instead, I simply get a teammate who runs a high skill power pulse with like 50 to 60% critical hit damage on it, and he will just use that to mark the target. So in this case, I can stack the damage from his pulse with my mobile cover and my booster shot for a higher per bullet damage amount than that I otherwise would have had. The skills that I'm using are Combat Medic, Tech Advance, Evasive Action, and Steady Hands. Combat Medic is simply too strong not to take, especially in my case where I'm mostly playing with a high skill power player that sometimes needs to be saved as well. But I can also use it to heal my mobile cover if I ever want to do that. Tech Advance is also pretty good with this build because it can easily be the deciding factor to whether or not your M700 actually gets that one shot or not. This, uh, this talent increases your weapon damage by 2% for 5 seconds per meter that you run using a cover to cover movement. What the game doesn't tell you though is that this talent is hard capped at 30%, but still though, you only have to do a cover to cover movement for 15 meters and you get 30% extra weapon damage. That is quite a lot and that's also gonna stack with the 10% damage from your mobile cover. To go with that, I'm running Evasive Action, which reduces incoming damage by 30% while using a cover to cover movement. Again, to kind of counteract the Reckless so that when I'm getting shot at during a cover to cover, I'm not just down in like three bullets. And this helps me use the tech advance with a little more safety. I still have to be pretty careful regardless, you know, I don't have a lot of toughness. But it at least gives me a little bit of extra time to back out if I get flanked or something like that. Lastly, I'm also using Steady Hands, which is a talent that increases both accuracy and stability by a whole lot when entering cover. The talent actually reads out that it reduces recoil by 25% for 10 seconds, but I don't really think that that is accurate, because I can stack 50% accuracy and 50% stability, and I will still not have a gun as stable as when I'm using the Steady Hands talent. Using this basically grants you the precision of the 1.6 SVD before it got nerfed, and it allows anyone to spam those shots at the maximum RPM without much of a drawback. And that's basically what you want to do with this build. It kind of forces this niche playstyle up on the player where you constantly have to run from cover to cover to get the most value out of your build. You know, you got to go back and forth and at the same time stay quite far in the back. 
But when you get the hang of it and you kind of know where the enemies are coming from, you can start doing a crazy amount of damage. Your M700 with the right buffs up, that's going to one-shot people on the body. And if a lot of people are trying to rush up on you, you know, trying to take you down, you can switch to the SVD and spray as much as you want. I'm going to have to be honest though, because I see far too often that all these build videos only show you the good side of a build and not the bad side. Because playing Deadeye, it does have its downsides. For instance, if you want to play this alone, in the dark zone, it's probably not the best idea, because if you're rogue, people are going to flank you, and you're never going to be able to watch all angles. Also, if you care about winning in Last Stand, then you should probably also not play Deadeye, because there are a lot of times when you just have to sit back and kind of wait for enemy players to show up, and if your team isn't doing the objective at that time, or isn't going for the mobs for the points and that kind of stuff, you're probably not going to win, because you'll be spending most of the time doing pretty much nothing. It's important for a Deadeye player to sit up at a good location and see enemies coming from a mile away. If you can't do that because you're constantly capturing points and trying to actually win the game, then you're gonna have a pretty bad time as a Deadeye player. Personally, even though I just showed you the whole build and I played with this for quite a bit since 1.7 dropped, I'm still not a big fan of the way that Deadeye works. Don't get me wrong, I can get used to the sniping play style, it's a fresh step away from the chicken dancing stuff that I've been doing since launch, but I definitely think that Deadeye is still way, way too powerful in some cases. I remember that there was a time in this game, around patch 1.4 and patch 1.5, when a one-shot sniper rifle, it was a thing. I did not really like the idea of it back then, simply because it didn't really give players on the receiving end the time to react. And now, we have another one-shot sniper in the game. The difference between then and now is, is that back then, it at least required the player to land a headshot to actually down someone in one hit. While right now, it's a one-shot everywhere on the body. Or it's a two-shot if you hit the feet. That's also possible to just shoot underneath those cars. Now over time, the developers have tried to nerf Deadeye to make it less powerful. First the bonus was removed from hipfire, then the bonus would only work if you're fully scoped in, and now you also have to be in cover to use the bonus on top of that. But I think that this is still not the right way to go about it, this is not how you nerf this gear set. I'm pretty much convinced right now that you can put as many handicaps on the set like this as you want, but as long as you can still get the bonus to work at a somewhat regular interval, it is still going to have that same damage potential. It is still going to be just as strong. And maybe that is what the developers want from this set. Maybe that's how they want it to be, you know? Have it be a more situational set, but then in those situations make it really, really, really powerful. But I would say it would be better if we had less of these handicaps and then to balance it out, make it not hit quite as hard. You know, it would also be a better experience for players on the receiving end. I don't even think that Deadeye is the problem per se, it is just that crit damage right now is way too powerful in PvP, and a gear set that grants you 100% crit chance is the best way to set that example, but don't be fooled, even outside of Deadeye builds, people can still one-shot you with ease, just get a normal sniper, for example on a high-end or an exotic build, mod it to have critical hit damage, and then get a talent on it like Disciplined to proc the crits. With a build like Ted's, your bullets can hit even harder, as the headshot damage is also not removed from the sniper as it is with Deadeye. But that's just one example. If it was up to me, I would really like them to mess around with the critical hit damage numbers for PvP. Maybe add a special modifier like critical hit damage times 0.7 before applying it to the players. Very similar to how we now have a 0.8 modifier for headshots in PvP. Because yes, I want to be able to create powerful and cool and unique builds and all that sort of stuff, but it shouldn't be something that is so disruptive to the gameplay experience that it's just so unbalanced and, you know, I don't want to have a one-shot body shot build, basically. That just destroys the whole purpose of having builds in the first place. That's all I'm going to have to say for now, though. More build videos are coming soonish. I'm still collecting the pieces for some of them, and I'm also working on some other things you guys are going to like, so it might be a few more days until the next one, but they're coming. I promise. Until then, though, I will see you all later, or, like they say, in the Netherlands, see you later.